Hello everyone, this is Kevin from Points Travel Tech. TAP Air Portugal is mainly known for two things. One, its recent fleet overhaul, consisting of Airbus A330neos and Airbus A321LRs for their long-haul flights. And two, very often offering ridiculously low business class fares from Europe across the Atlantic. Today I want to share my experiences of flying on TAP Air Portugal's Airbus A321LR in business class. Since this was a return trip, I sat in both the honeymoon and the throne seats and will compare both types for you. One more thing before we get started. Please help me reach my goal of 1000 subscribers for this year by hitting that subscribe button. Also, there will be a giveaway at the end. Thanks a lot and now enjoy the review. Let's start with some facts about the flight. We booked this trip during one of TAP Portugal's famous business class sales via Expedia. Our itinerary took us from Amsterdam via Lisbon to Montreal and back the same way. We paid 1,177 euros per person. I'll be showing you the honeymoon seats and the throne seats of the Airbus A321 long range and comparing the pros and cons between both options. Starting off at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, we boarded an A321neo for the roughly 3 hour hop to Lisbon. The interior of the plane looked quite new, with adjustable headrests and universal outlets. A menu was provided with two meal options and the crew, most notably the purser, was awesome, friendly and engaging. Unfortunately, this did not continue to be the case during our other flights. The food was nothing special, with the meat tasting quite good but the carrots being super al dente. After two stressful bus rides and thorough document checks, we finally made it to the Airbus A321LR. Heading into this narrow-body, long-range aircraft, you can see that business class is set up in a 2-2-1-1 configuration. The odd numbers, including row 1 in the bulkhead, have four seats in each row, and the even numbers are equipped with two throne seats each. Let's start with a seat tour of 1D. A comfy blanket and pillow were provided. A small storage space underneath the IFE screen, and next to it, a coat hook and a literature pocket. To the right, we have the seat controls, followed by the headphones, IFE remote, headphone jack, USB charging port, and the reading light. A bottle of water was also waiting at every business class seat. I'm 1 meter 87, or 6 foot 1, and there was ample leg room for me. Between the two seats, two universal outlets were available as well. Also, TAP Portugal opted to add the individual air vents in this aircraft. The table deploys out of the center console, which doesn't provide any form of extendable privacy dividers. While quite sturdy, the table was not level and slanted to the right. Let's quickly check out the provided headphones. They were noise cancelling and quite comfortable. The amenity kit came in this neat pouch and provided some nice goodies like the colorful socks, eye mask, pen and lip balm. I'm giving away an unopened amenity kit so stick around to the end to find out how to participate. Up next, the in-flight entertainment. The monitor was a touchscreen, but due to the distance from the passenger you're better off using the remote. In addition to movies and TV shows, TAP offered free messaging via Wi-Fi for the whole flight and different data packages. The menu was not very extensive and didn't provide any information about the available drinks. Those details could be found in the IFE. Kudos to TAP for being one of the first airlines to bring back hot towels during COVID, but not offering a welcome drink was a big letdown on the other hand. The menu stated that on this flight, nuts and a drink were available upon request only. The problem was that the crew worked in the galley behind the curtain. I ended up actively contacting the crew and being the only one who received nuts and champagne. I enjoyed the shrimp starter and the roasted octopus was cooked well. It's just not my favorite thing to eat. Two types of bread were also on offer as well. Dessert was simple, consisting of ice cream and so-called fruit soup. The cheese was vacuum sealed for a reason, as it had an intense smell, but tasted good. The armrest can be lowered so you can leave your seat while the table is deployed. 
Which brings me to the single business class restroom located at the front of the cabin. It's small due to the aircraft size and had nothing special going on. Unfortunately, the service was the complete opposite of our previous flight. The two flight attendants were not engaging or particularly friendly, to be honest. They simply prepared the meals, served them and took everything away again. For the rest of the flight, they hung out in the galley and I don't recall noticing any sort of small talk with any of the passengers. Having flown two flights previous to this one, it was time to take a nap and try out bed mode. The pillow was decently sized and the blanket went well with the cabin temperature. No additional bedding was provided, but the seat cushioning was padded enough. The advantage of sitting in the first row is the much larger footwell and the bulkhead. You'll see the difference when I show you the throne seat later. I prefer to sleep on my side and this was no problem here. After a few hours of sleep, a pre-landing meal was served. Before we continue with the lounges and the return flight, I would really appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. This would really help me out, thanks. On our way home, we stopped by quite a few lounges, starting with the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge. This lounge was very spacious with a variety of seating options, runway views and an open bar. Snacks and soft drinks were self-serve. You could order hot food with your phone, but they stopped serving hot items when we got there, which was a big disappointment. So I checked my Priority Pass app and visited the Salon Banque Nationale to get some hot food before our flight. Having arrived in Lisbon, we visited the Tap Portugal Premium Lounge. This was rather underwhelming for being the flagship lounge of this airline. The food options were not very good, the available seating had no real area to relax or lie down, and worst of all, there were no shower facilities. So once again, priority pass to the rescue. The Anna Lounge next door, not affiliated with Al Nippon Airways, provides shower facilities you can use for roughly 16 euros in addition to requiring a priority pass. Despite the room being quite dark and having mediocre ventilation, the shower was refreshing and the provided amenities and towels were great. Let's hop back on the A321LR and check out that throne seat. A quick look at economy class showing us a 3-3 configuration with the first few rows having extra legroom seats. This is the throne seat in all its glory. In total there are four of these on the aircraft. The two main advantages are the additional privacy and the big increase in storage space. The only real downside is the smaller footwell compared to the bulkhead. Checking out seat 4B in detail, we'll again find the coat hook and the seat controls in the same position. The first major difference is this storage cubby. All the amenities and plugs are in the same location. On the other side of the seat, there is a literature pocket and some additional storage space. Between yourself and the window, there is some more space to store your bedding, shoes or a carry-on bag. Here is a first glimpse of the smaller footwell. On the aisle side, you'll find the universal outlet and another literature pocket. The tray table deploys in the same fashion and also was not level, but this time the table was slanted to the left. The main courses were different and this time I didn't even get a chance to order nuts and champagne. The pasta I selected was very tasty and the salmon starter was also good as well. Dessert was almost the same except that this time we got a variety of cheeses. Here is the throne seat in bed mode. The disadvantage here is that you cannot lower an armrest in order to provide more space for your upper body. As a side sleeper I didn't have any issues though. The footwell is noticeably smaller. Here they are side by side. Breakfast was served and this concluded the overnight flight from Montreal to Lisbon. Summarizing the two flights, I can say they were both very similar service-wise. 
both crews weren't engaging with their passengers, merely doing the work they had to do, and that was it. The only passionate crew member I encountered was the purser during our short haul flight. The seats are very comfortable, and I hope I could show you all the pros and cons of the different seat types so that you can find the right one for you. Reserving a throne seat does not cost extra, so if you want one, reserve it as quickly as possible. Flying long haul in narrow body airplanes is becoming more and more common, but at the moment it's still a special way to fly. Finding a business class deal from Europe to North America for a thousand euros or less with TAP Portugal is very common. And I would never pay more than that for one of their flights. You can find better service for similar prices elsewhere. To win the brand new TAP Portugal amenity kit, simply like this video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will announce the winner on March 1st, 2022 and contact the winner via his or her comment. Good luck! Thanks for watching, happy travels and see you soon.